Welcome back, scientists. I'm excited for today's lesson because so many of the things that we've talked about in our climate change unit have been about things breaking. And this time we're gonna talk about things getting fixed. We're talking about solutions. So this is a lesson for sixth grade scientists from the Earth Changing Climate Unit. And this lesson is called Climate Change Solutions. So for this lesson, you're going to need a couple of things. It's great if you have someone to talk to, something to take some notes down as you're thinking of your ideas. And then we're going to be using two things from Amplify Science. There's an article that we're going to read called Climate Change Solutions, and then there's also the Earth Changing Climate Sim, which we're going to use to model those solutions. Okay, so our investigation question for this lesson is, what can be done to stop the carbon dioxide and methane in Earth's atmosphere from increasing? And so let's get started by reading a new email from Irene Lee. You'll remember that she is a climatologist that works for the World Climate Institute, which is a fictional company based off of real companies that do research about climate change on our planet. Okay, so your job is a climate student climatologist, and this is an email to you about what we've been working on and thinking about during this unit. Your models and explanations of how increasing carbon dioxide and methane are causing temperatures to increase and ice to melt are being posted on the WCI website. Thank you for your contribution. Your next project, I'd like you to reach, I'd like you to research a new question. What can be done to stop the increase of carbon dioxide and methane? Now that WCI has provided clear explanations of the problem, we'd like to focus on possible and worthwhile solutions. Once again, we'll be sharing this information with the public so they can understand how they can help our planet. Irene, this is Dr. Irene Lee, head climatologist at the World Institute, the World Climate Institute. So the possible solutions that we're going to be researching today fall into two main categories. We have some solutions that focus on finding a way to stop making carbon dioxide and methane. There's too much that we're producing, so how can we reduce how much we're making? And other solutions actually find a way to pull out the carbon dioxide and methane from the atmosphere so that it's not there. Because you'll remember from previous lessons that when carbon dioxide levels and methane levels increase, that the amount of energy that is able to exit the Earth's system decreases, which actually raises the temperature of our planet and makes ice melt. So each one of these things is connected to the next thing in this chain reaction. So we need to figure out how to break this chain. How can we have less carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere? So in lesson nine, we're going to look at the possible climate change solutions of producing less carbon dioxide through solar power and producing less carbon dioxide through bikes and transit. And then in lesson 10, we'll, we'll be talking more about the other solutions, which are about removing carbon dioxide and um, methane from Earth's atmosphere. So there's a really cool article that we're going to read that is about climate change solutions. And the best way to get that is to log on to your Clever account if you're a student and sixth grade student in Seattle schools. And from there, you can follow this pathway, which is open Amplify Science. From the menu, choose the library, and then go to Earth's Changing Climate Unit and choose the article Climate Change Solutions. And if you're not a sixth grader, or you can't access your um, Clever account or your Amplify account, then you can instead go to the Seattle Schools Science Department website at seattleschools.org slash academics slash curriculum slash science. And from there, you can scroll down to middle school. It's quite a ways down now. And then download the Lesson 9 packet. And in that, there is the article that we're going to be reading right now. Okay, I've just opened the article so we can read it together. And this is the article that we're going to read. It's called Climate Change Solutions. And it starts off explaining the problem, and then it goes through five different solutions. We're just going to read the first two solutions in this video. And then in lesson 10, we'll read through the next, the next three solutions. Okay, let's get started. So this picture here is a picture of an, of 
a combustion reaction. You can see um, some light that's being produced, and also you can see some particles. Those could be gases or parts of carbon. And it says combustion or burning fuel is the process used to power most of our homes, businesses, and cars. Combustion adds carbon dioxide gas to the atmosphere. Most of the energy sources humans use to power our homes, business, and, and cars involve burning fuel, a process we call combustion. Combustion leads to higher temperatures on Earth, but not because fires are hot. The process of burning almost any fuel puts carbon dioxide, CO2, into the atmosphere. Whether the fuel is coal, oil, natural gas, or wooden logs, it's this increase in carbon dioxide that warms the planet. Carbon dioxide is not the only gas that affects the Earth's climate. Would you believe that some of the gases that warm the planet come from inside farm animals? Cows and other grass-eating animals like sheep and goats produce a gas called methane, which also warms the planet when it gets into the atmosphere. Methane is also produced by industrial sources such as using natural gas to produce electricity. However, of the methane put into the atmosphere by human activities, 35% comes from raising grass-eating animals. Because they warm the planet, carbon dioxide and methane are known as greenhouse gases. How do we solve the problem of too much carbon dioxide and methane in the atmosphere? Many people have thought of possible solutions like capturing carbon dioxide at power plants, reducing the amount of methane animals released into the air, and using more solar power. We may need to use all of these solutions together if we want to solve as huge a problem as climate change. Okay, the first solution that we'll be looking at right now in Lesson 9 is solar power. So here's a picture of our giant star, the sun, and the caption says, the sun provides energy without adding carbon dioxide to Earth's atmosphere. What energy source is about 93 million miles away, 150 million kilometers away? The sun, of course. Solar power plants convert light energy from sunshine into electrical energy. Increasing our use of solar power can help reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. But how? Solar power isn't taking carbon dioxide out of the air. How can solar power affect the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? This shows a picture of someone installing solar panels onto someone's roof. And it says solar panels like these convert light energy from the sun into electrical energy people can use in their homes. Unlike solar power plants, most power plants produce electricity by burning fuel, that is combustion. Burning fuel releases carbon dioxide. Solar power works differently. Instead of burning fuel for power, they use energy from the sun. If we can produce electricity using energy from the sun instead of energy from burning fuel, we can stop putting so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This picture here shows an array of solar panels. You can see that they're all pointing uh, to the part where they can get the most energy from the sun, and these panels can actually change direction throughout the day as the sun moves. It says this, pulse, this solar power plant uses energy from the sun's light instead of from combustion of fuel. One drawback to solar panel is that it's expensive. However, engineers are working to make solar power cheaper. With smart engineering, they hope to make solar power an even bigger part of the carbon dioxide solution now and in the future. So that's solution one, this idea of solar power. How this would help is by putting less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Okay, so let's look at solution two, which also focuses on putting less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Bikes and transit, solution two. One way humans can keep carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere is to drive cars less frequently. Driving cars increases carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Most cars burn fuel through combustion, and burning fuel releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Even electric cars tend to increase the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because they get energy from being plugged into an electrical outlet. The electricity that comes from the power plants and most power plants produce electric energy by burning fuel, which releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. People can keep some of that carbon dioxide from being released by driving less, no matter what kind of car they have. Subways help people get around without driving cars. How can people stop driving cars so much? 
One answer is to find other ways of traveling. For short trips, people can ride bikes or walk instead of driving. For longer trips, people can use public transit, buses, trains, and subways. These vehicles usually burn fuel or run on electricity generated by combustion, but lots of people can ride them at once. If eight people are riding a bus at one time, that's one engine burning fuel to move eight people. If those same eight people are each riding in a separate car, that's eight engines burning fuel to move eight people. Even though transit vehicles often burn fuel, riding public transit helps reduce the amount of carbon dioxide we put into the air. So those are the two solutions. Let's take a look at each of those solutions in a little bit more detail. So we had two solutions. We had solar power and we also had bikes and transit. And these two solutions are things that we can do to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide and methane that we put into Earth's atmosphere. So in these two pictures that I pulled off of the reading, we can see solar panels, which can be used instead of fuel burning power plants to produce electricity. And that reduces the amount of carbon dioxide because it's not being produced during combustion. And then we also have the bikes and transit solution, which is where people make the choice to ride a bike or transit or walk instead of using combustion for a vehicle which then reduces the amount of carbon dioxide that gets put into Earth's atmosphere. So again, each one of these solutions is only part of the solution. Obviously, sometimes people need to ride cars and sometimes people need to use combustion. But if we reduce the amount of combustion that we're using either for um, power plants or through transportation, that means less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which reduces the amount of gases that redirect energy back to Earth's system. So the next thing we're going to do in Lesson 9 is we are going to figure out a way to model both of these solutions in the Earth's changing climate sim. So before we start, in your notebook or on a piece of paper, jot down a table that you can use to to write down some notes. And we'll open up the sim and we'll see if we can figure out a way to, to model these two solutions. But before I turn the sim on, I want you to either stop the video or pause it and talk with a friend, a family member at your house, or write down some ideas before you watch the exploration that we're gonna do together on the video, just so that you can come up with your own ideas. Okay, so make sure you pause it or stop the video and then we'll do this together. Okay, I have just opened up the very awesome Earth's Changing Climate Sim. And when I hit play, you can see all of these little yellow ar arrows moving through Earth's atmosphere. These represent energy that's entering and exiting Earth's system. If you've watched some of the previous videos, then this sim will be familiar to you. And if this is your first time seeing it, then I want you to notice a couple of things. One, I'm going to move my picture. So we can adjust the amount of gases that are in Earth's atmosphere manually by doing this. Or if we open up the human activities mode, then the sim will just have the little human sims, which is right there, and the little cows and um, cars and all of those things can actually um, change the amount of carbon dioxide. So instead of moving the toggle back and forth, we can just have humans doing their thing on Earth's surface. And when we do that, the amount of carbon dioxide and methane will increase, as we talked about in Lesson 5, 6, and even in 7 and 8. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And we're going to leave the population at 7 billion because that's accurate. So the things that we can change for the first solution, which is about solar energy, so solar power, so we want to reduce the amount of combustion per person by doing that. And so before I go any further, I'm going to hit pause. The Sims run for a count of about 22, and that's sort of reached equilibrium. You'll notice that the surface of the Sim, the surface of the Earth in the Sim is glowing. That means more energy is being absorbed. The global average temperature has increased. Let's go ahead and model the first climate change solution which is about solar energy. And we can do something simple by just reducing the amount of combustion per person to low. And then if I hit play, then 
the amount of carbon dioxide is no longer being added to Earth's system, the same that we had before. So if there's less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, then that means that the temperature isn't going to um, keep going super, super high. So I'm going to pause that and, sorry, not pause, let's switch over to the graphic. So we can see that the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere was rising and rising and rising, and then we changed the consumption level to medium. And so in continue, instead of continuing to rise, it has leveled off. And as it leveled off, you can see that the temperature, although rising a little bit because the carbon dioxide didn't go away in the atmosphere, it hasn't continued to increase at quite the same rate that it was before. And so we can see through this that this isn't going to solve the whole problem, but it can definitely slow down the problem, which is a benefit. And so um, in this scenario, our surface ice that did continue to melt because the carbon dioxide had already been dumped into Earth's system. And so it was still up there redirecting energy back to Earth's system. So the way that we use the sim for the solar panel would be the same way that I would set it up for transit and bikes. If we could reduce everyone's combustion per person down, then that can really help by not continuing to increase the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere. It's enough to slow the problem down, but it's not enough to totally reverse the problem. So in the next couple of solutions, we're going to talk about how to remove that carbon dioxide from Earth's system. But go ahead and take a moment to record in your notes what you observed when we reduced the amount of carbon dioxide that we added to Earth's system. And I'll meet you again in lesson 10, and we'll explore some of the other solutions together. See you then.